Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of The Extra Point. You got Mr. P.L. Coulter in one box. We have Miss Tasha T. Sizzle coming to you all the way from the Dominican Republic. How goes it today, T. Sizzle? Oh, it goes great. Although last night we were without power for almost six hours simply because a tree fell on a the line. They had to decide to either get remove the tree that night or either cut our power back on and remove the tree again tomorrow. Oh, okay. So so all's what it ends well. Did you sleep through it? So I was glad that they decided to keep the power out longer yesterday so I would not have to deal with out having power because where we live, we're on a different power grid than the other part of the North Coast. So our electricity is a little bit different here. Okay. But yes, I did. I came in. I took me a good cold shower and I put on Quiet Place 2 and fell asleep. Nice, nice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of weeks worth of stuff to get to. We have a jam-packed show as usual, but before we do any of that, we have to give a shout out to our sponsor. We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. Again, guys, go to the website, uh, which is MayJanes.com, and you can see what she's coming up with. And also, you can look on Instagram at MayJanesCoffee.com, well, MayJanes Coffee, and you can see the content that she's still posting. Awesome. And the show is also brought to you by Wolverine Comics underscore TX. Uh, that is hosted by Mr. Michael Hasso, who is out there in Nevada. Kicking up dust. What up, Michigan Mike? Make sure you follow them on Instagram. That's Wolverine Comics TX for all of your comic book needs. Now, T Sizzle, the for all of us football fans starving for a little NFL, we got a little bit, we got some 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 nuggets, some crumbles on Thursday. The NFL schedule release was on Thursday night, which is always big for, for football fans because now you get a, a real lay of the land of, of who your team has to face, when, how many primetime games you get. You know, yada, yada, yada. And as as always, the NFL didn't disappoint. We have plenty of matchups with intrigue and uh, and marquee names littered across the board. So let, let's get to this. Now, the 2023 season is going to kick off in Kansas City, where the defending champion Chiefs host the upstart Detroit Lions. Natasha, when I saw that, my eyebrow raised, and I was thinking, hmm, Detroit? Normally when you say Detroit, you say basketball but we have the lions in their first ever thursday night opening night slot tasha were you surprised by that yeah especially seeing how all the suspensions that the nfl levied down on the lions um they know their team is not going to be at a 400 percent to be right. out there playing as That's a, a season point. opener right. so yes i am kind of surprised or maybe they already had this lined up before these suspensions but they knew these suspensions were going to happen because they already right. had been investigating so it is a surprise to have this game be the, the first game. I agree, Tasha, because when you look at Kansas City's schedule, you see the Eagles are all on their schedule. The, the, the Bengals are on their schedule. Two teams that, that are very high profile that you would think would get a national uh, game out of that, which they, they still will, I'm sure. Good morning, Mr. Denise Denise. But, yeah, I, I was surprised but happy for Detroit. It's good to see them um, get some shine outside of um, – of uh, Thanksgiving Day. No, Little outside Kenneth of Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, speaking of the Chiefs, checking in saying them little kitties are going to get whooped. <laughs> what up, Justin? Glad you could make the show. I agree, but we'll get into our official, official picks a little bit later in the show. I also got some good news for you Titans fans, but just to, to recap opening weekend, the Cowboys will face the Giants in Sunday Night Football, and your boy, Mr. Lyron, Mr. Mr. Aaron Rodgers, will make his Jets debut on Monday Night Football as they host the Buffalo Bills. That should garner a lot of views as well. I took a peek at your schedule, your 49ers, Tasha T. Sizzle, and your week one matchup has me all ablaze because they take on your other team, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say other, in the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Bet on Black Bowl. Now, I cannot <laughs> wait till we get to the week one predictions to see if you really bet on black. <laughs> or are you rolling with your 49ers? Any thoughts about that opening day matchup? When I saw the, the, the thing about when I when the schedule came out, and of course I, I looked at my 49ers schedule, the first thing I did see was I was like, damn, not 
come on now, I got to bet on black. What's going on here? <laughs> but what stood out the most to me was the 49ers are only, they only have four games against teams that were under 500 or did not like sniff the playoffs. Well, well uh, hello. That, I mean, they should. Did you see how y'all molly walked through the, the, the NFL last year? I mean, it was, um, I don't know what the, uh, uh, the commanders' schedule. I mean, uh, record was, but they, they were. They had a winning. They had a. Uh, they were eight, eight and one. Okay, so, so they, they were. You know, but only people. They're in our division. We we have the Rams and the Cardinals. Those are the only two teams. So that's four games that we play, of teams who were not in any sort of playoff contention or had a winning record. Now let's keep it real. When you when I looked at the 49ers schedule yesterday, something jumped out at me, and I just couldn't contain myself. Now, for, to give you all some back scene story on this. Now, Tasha comes to the great city of Dallas every year for the annual Texas State Fair. This year, it falls on October the 7th. Lo and behold, on October the 8th, on Sunday Night Football, the San Francisco 49ers host the Dallas Cowboys in the rematch of all rematches. And for the first time in about 30 years, me and Tasha are going to watch this game live together. Oh, no. No, you know what? No, this will be the first time since 2014 because we went to a game live, and that was the scene. A sea of red inside of uh, AT&T Stadium. I'm still sick about that. Um, that was the Kaepernick debut, and we all know how that team went on to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you sick? Woo! That was, was a little work to get. Y'all, when I tell y'all. What kind y'all, of gas was that? All that, all that damn red. I, I, I swear, I thought I was at the damn Rose Bowl. I was like, what is going on here? Now, oh, look, and speaking of which, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> what are not a faithful in the house? We, we took over. It was literally Levi Stadium East. D, like, uh, DJ no, Khaled would have been proud of you all because they took over. That is inside Cowboys Stadium. And, uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was rough. And the 49ers won that game. I was living. So we get our rematch, and I'm smelling a bet, ladies and gentlemen. I think that weekend, the loser of said game will go live with the opposing team's garb on. You know, how are you looking in a Michael Parsons jersey, Tasha? I think it's a great fit. What do you think? I don't know how you know how you're going to squeeze your pectorals in, you know, in my... <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do some prison push-ups. And, um, and you know, and my shirt, you know, got a little bit dazzling on the top, you know. So it, no, it, just, bring, a just bring a do-rag. I, I, we'll do-rag it up. I'll look like Booker T. Um, now, uh, going on with the national schedule, Thanksgiving Day, wanted to get your thoughts on. We have Green Bay at Dallas. I mean, I'm sorry, at uh, the Lions. The Commanders at Dallas and your 49ers at the Seahawks. Pretty good lineup, right? You you. You agree? Also, did you get a glimpse of the Thursday night? Not, I mean, I'm just kind of going off because I saw, I actually saw this this morning on Twitter. Did you get a look at the Thursday night s- slate of games? I see to the C made one, but what, what, what do you got? The only game that will be something that I really don't want to watch is December 21st. And that depends on how the Saints and the Rams are, they're the only two teams on. This is a bona fide schedule here. These, I mean, you normally the Thursday night games is the, eh, it, right, right. This slate of Thursday night games, they some count. You know what? Because they're going to make people, make sure people sign up for that Amazon Prime because they now pick up the Thursday night package. And, um, and yeah, there are some remarkable games on there. We have to bet on black on Thursday night football when we take on the Pittsburgh Steelers later on in the year on Thursday night football. Now, when it comes to nationally televised games, this is nothing new to Tasha T. Sizzle. She's been spoiled. The The Cowboys will start their America's team. They have uh, six primetime games and only two noon games. 49ers are not far behind. They have five primetime games and only three noon games, which is good for you church goers. You can go catch the early service, come home, catch your favorite Team, um, but there's a there, there's a team out there, the Tennessee Titans. We have two primetime games. We have a, a Monday night against the Dolphins, e, and we have a Thursday night against the Steelers, double E. We also have a London game 
against Baltimore. Triple O. Like, they, they just want to get us on TV to smash us. You see, we you need I don't matchups. understand why the NFL continues to send products like the Titans and the, the, the Jaguars and some of the also-ran teams who are not so good. Why do they continue to send them over there in whoa, London? Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just call us an also-ran? Yes, As I ran through did and also ran because they already um, talk about the brand of American football saying it's not football because their football, of course, is soccer. And then you sending that product overseas and it's like, mm, this is what what these Americans get happy about. This is what I, am, they I am hurt by this, Tasha. I mean, we got King Henry. He still got the crown. I mean, we ain't got nothing else. There's no count. Y'all don't even have a, a real quarterback. That's true. But we're going to digress on that. And I'm glad you're getting into the Titans because, Tasha, Titans fans, I need you to sit up in your chair. I need you to nuke that coffee because I got some good news for you. When I saw the schedule, Tasha, two words jumped out at me when I when I looked through the Titans schedule. We're back. We are back. I, wanna, I got just a couple of notes. Titans fans, listen up. One, we avoided Buffalo and Kansas City for the first time in years. We don't have either one of those two teams on the docket. Last year, we played the NFC East, which had no team with a losing record and three playoff teams. That was a monster conference. This division. This year, we played the NFC South that is littered with quarterback questions. That's number two. Number three, we get the, the rookie row, row, row your boat. We played C.J. Stroud twice with the Texans. We play Anthony Richardson twice with the Colts. We even have a home game against Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. And again, we play Tampa Bay with quarterback questions. We play uh, Atlanta with quarterback questions. Hell, they just got rid of Marcus Mariota. So th there's hope, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm a homer. Let's see. Mr. Glenn says the NFL is trying to make the game international like the NBA, but it won't work. Will it not work because of also rans? Yes. Tosh, what do you think about that? They're not sending bona fide stars, like because you're a Titans fan, and I mean, of course, I rooted for Derrick Henry. I, I liked Derrick Henry when he was at Bama. He's not an international He's type not. star. He's so not. when you're sending over, the stars of, or you know, the so-called stars are not international, right? Then it, it's not gonna go over well. Like last night. Um, because the game was in Spanish. I had a couple of friends over here after the power came back on. Uh, one of my, my my little young friends who loves basketball, the biggest like LeBron James fan. That resonates here. Yes. He knows when they put Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the screen. Now, this kid is 24. When they put Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the screen, you know what he said? He said, Capitan. And you remember what we used to call Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Cap. Right. He knew who Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was or is at the age of 24. Right, because the best players in the NBA are global. They did a but, masterful job of, of marketing but, their but stars. You, but even before that, before the onslaught of European players, you had Michael Jordan. Right. You had all these other international players. Names or right, Kobe people. Bryant is China. Yeah, right. I mean, oh, right, Alan Before, obviously yeah, is I mean, big overseas. The, the, the Golden State Warriors are big overseas. Stephon right. Marbury was big overseas and still is big and overseas. Still is. And your boy, Mr. LeBron James, is 40. He may be a star over there too coming up next season. That is know. true. I, I'm venture to say the more people recognize Savannah James in Hong Kong than they do Derrick Henry. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, that's the issue. And then like I said you're sending like they they may know a Patrick Mahomes, right? So if you're not sending the good quality to you, basically send it as they would say rubbish. You're sending rubbish over there. You will not call the Tennessee Titans rubbish on this show while I have on a Tennessee Titans shirt. But People take your shirt off and curl it like those banners uh, in um, Shim Beckler Hall. Bring back the banners, damn it! Uh, to, to get me sidetracked. Bring back the banners. Look, we got nil on that. Don't get me sidetracked on that. We got to come back and do a segment on that. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna put Tasha's hate for the Titans to the test because it's we're two extremes. Hate you. You detest the Titans. The only good thing the Titans did for you was get me hooked up when you had that great job there with those warm seats on them cold winter nights. Oh, uh, all right. So let's do this. 
Tasha, we're going to play rapid thumbs up, thumb down, win or lose. I'm going to run through this schedule rapid fire. You tell me, Tasha, if they're going to win or if they're going to lose. I've got my pen right here. I want to keep score because I already got my record. I want to see just how far off we are. And before we do, Kenny, man, the Titans fan says, all the analysts pick against Goat James and the Lakers. They tried to say if Curry and the Warriors could beat them, come back from being down 3-1, they would start putting Goat and Curry together. We got to see what a healthy LeBron James team. Oh. Kenny, you get the comment of the day so far, buddy. And we're going to get into that. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron All right. LeBron James. Right, LeBron James. We're going to get to LeBron here in just a minute. But Tasha, you on the hot seat. Let's go. Week one at Saints. Win or loss? Who's the Saints quarterback? Derek Carr. <laughs> Damn. Don't <laughs> no, nobody like Derek Carr. I mean, it ain't even that. It's like, damn. And then the other is and then James is in the back. And Alvin Kamara will be suspended for knocking that dude out in the elevator. <laughs> he dropped him, he dropped them fifth war D's on him. Fifth <laughs> <laughs> on him. Right. Halloween fell on the weekend. <laughs> uh I oh, I don't know because. You if it takes you that long, I'm going to say win. No, I'm going to go with the Saints because they have a stable quarterback. Okay. All right. Week two, home versus the Chargers. Man, I got to go with the Chargers. All right. Uh, at Cleveland. I think they could beat Cleveland. Okay. Uh, home to the Bengals. Okay. Let's oh, yeah, yeah. At Colts. As we say good morning to Christina, Georgia checking in. I'm going to sp- – I know I know you're going to go down the list. I'm going to split that one. I'm going to say – Okay, so Titans. you want to take both teams at home? Yeah. No, right. no, no, no. I'm going to take the Titans there because the Titans usually always win there. That's and true. And the Colts usually always win in Nashville. So yeah, I'm now, say- ladies and gentlemen, check this out. My cracks research staff showed that Ryan Tannehill is undefeated in the Colts arena. Tasha knew that without no research. I am loving that. Good job by you, T. Sizzle. Uh, we go across the pond, Ravens in London. Oh, that's an L. Right. Next, uh, after a bye week, we go to uh, Pittsburgh to take on the fight in Hans ketchup bottles. Okay, loss. Okay. You know, thank you. I always betting on black. Right. Home to a Tampa Bay, I mean, a, a Tom Brady list Tampa Bay. I'll say the Titans on that one. Okay, then at the Jaguars. Ooh. I'm, I got to go with the Jags on that one. I do too. Then home to the Panthers with uh, with um, Mr. Young. What week is that? That's going to be week 10. Mm, I'm going to go with the Titans simply because if the young QB starts to look shaky, they may try to pull him. Okay. All right. We'll take that. Could or, could or could not be in a downward spiral by week 10. All right, and then we have the rematch with the Colts, which you say they split. Mm-hmm. All right, and then at Miami on Monday Night Football. That's an L. Okay, no worries about two of that late in the season. I mean, I think their backup can beat us with, with Ty Hill. And I mean, I, yeah, I think they'll have someone else in. Okay, then home to the Texans. Oh, my God, you really thinking about that one? Look, this is the thing. It's the Titans' suspect ass quarterback play, and <laughs> y'all ain't got no damn receivers. That is true. Both both are That's true. Why both it's hard for me to pull for them. I've got this meme, and it says, "Mama said Titans fans are ornery because all they they got all them quarterbacks, but no receivers." <laughs> no lost told. So you you taking the, the Titans at home against the Texans? Damn. Yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Titans. Yeah. All right. Then we have the Seahawks on Christmas Eve at home facing the Titans. That's a loss. Damn. Then we have the Falcons at home. That's a win. We have the Texans in a rematch at Houston in Houston. Yeah, Houston, where that Buddha at? Woo, damn. Hey, hey. So that's the Titans win then, huh? No. Oh, snap. All right. And then uh, last but not least, home to the Jaguars for the for the, for the finale. Damn. 
I'm going to give that one to the Titans. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, she has us with seven wins and ten losses, which sounds about about the national average of what they're picking for the Titans. I have us with ten wins and seven losses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh in your face like that. We shall see. Ladies and gentlemen, the gauntlet has been laid down. She laughed at my 10-win prediction. Y'all, pray for me. Now, let's go, over, let's, let's go over to the NBA because I want to play a little game of fair or foul with you because you always trip me up with these answers. I think you're going to go one way and you go another. So let's go to a little fair files. Lots of, of interesting developments going on. Wait a minute, but, but wait a minute. Before you even go there, I got a question to the people out there listening. Who Shoot else brag? Who else bracket is busted? Because that's what this, this NBA postseason is like. It's like an NCAA tournament where the Cinderella comes out with the shoes, the dress, <laughs> the prints, and, and she wasn't nice to the sisters and the mom. She kicked them out. Look, Tasha, if it makes you feel any better, if you go back and rewind the tape. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. We have an answer from the committee. Yours! <laughs> Well, you know what, Tasha? I'm going to stand up here and, and face the, the fire with you. Mine as well. I picked Memphis and Milwaukee to meet in the finals, and they both got bounced in the first round. How about that? You See, you that's your problem. No, no, no. I ain't got no problem. That's your I'm, problem. I don't have no problem. You continue to pick. You just like Mike. Y'all <laughs> continue to pick with y'all hearts and not y'all brains. <laughs> Still sleep on them like it's... Right. Now, but, but at the time, this was a Lakers team that had barely beat Minnesota in the play-in. They had been bad all year. Nobody saw this Lakers coming like they did, especially what they did against Golden State. But, yes, I, I, I did. See? Look, 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 he said I heard my name. Just call my name. So I saw the Michigan Mike checking in from the West Coast, up early, ready to defend his honor. West that's, Side? That's what's up, West Side, in the house. What up, Mike? But right, he yeah, he said I heard I heard my name. All right, so fair foul. <laughs> Milwaukee fired their head coach Mike Budenholzer after holding the league's best record this year, after being the number one seed in the entire tournament, after winning the championship three years ago. Tasha, they did lose in the first round to Miami, but now we see that Miami was misseeded. Hell, they in the conference finals now. Is this fair foul firing Milwaukee coach uh, Mike Boone? Oh, it's, it's, it's foul. I, I don't even know what some of the national people <laughs> have been saying about this, but I think it's foul. Right. Because it's almost to that question that we always ask, who else you going to get? Right. Um, Giannis did go out with an injury, a very right. scary back injury in that first right. round. And I think had Giannis been fully 100%, I don't think Miami would have won. I agree with you there, and I do think that this was one of those things to where I'm putting the blame solely on Giannis because I think after he caught all that heat about not being a failure, he was like, I need some changes made. They blaming me, and we need to, to shift the narrative to somebody else. Mike Bootenholzer, since he came to that team, they've always been our number one or number two seed. They won a championship. Hell, it ain't his fault that Giannis couldn't make a free throw. He missed 13 free throws in one of those losses. And not to mention, he got handed a team that was already on the up and up. So Right, right. So, you know, you 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 pick up Drew Holiday, you win a championship. The team is not bad. You run it back next year, you're going to be a top two, three seed. Miami just just, just Miami jaw this year. They remind me of the old Baltimore Ravens. It didn't matter who was playing quarterback. Mm -hmm. They were going to get in your ass if they got in the playoffs. They would beat Brady. They would beat the, the Titans when the Titans was some count. Like, I look at Miami the same way. Stop it, Tasha. All so, right. who, I mean, who are they looking at? Because I saw that the Raptors were interviewing J.J. Reddick. The Raptors are interviewing J.J. Reddick, which is which is – which is uh, which is interesting because Nick Nurse, who just who won the championship with Toronto, got fired as well. Maybe he finds his way to Milwaukee. We shall see. But Giannis, bruh, we're gonna forgive you this time, bruh. But he but he was on Instagram thanking thanking uh, Boonhauser. He wasn't talking bad or doing anything. I don't. And you notice the last two coaches that that have been fired, Giannis was not in favor of firing those coaches. That's true. 
He is loyal because he stayed in Milwaukee at a time before they won that championship and before they got Holiday. So he is a loyal person. We shall see. They're about to have new ownership there. They got some cap issues in Milwaukee. It's going to be interesting to see if they're try just trying to do a total reset with a new coach. We shall see. Now, next up, fair file, Tasha. Patrick Beverly went on a podcast a week and a half ago and said that he ran into Russell Westbrook out in L.A. And Russell Westbrook told him, according to Beverly, that if the Lakers win the championship, he wants his ring, and Patrick Beverly does too. Tasha, now, now this is a, a tricky subject here. Is this fair or foul for Westbrook or First for Beverly all, to want to? If he don't send his crispity, crackety, black ass down somewhere. Okay, DeBrat, don't call that man Jimmy the Cricket. You know how I feel about him. Uh, no. You do not deserve a ring because y'all were traded. Keep going with your right. thought, Tasha. We're going to come to this right here, but right. keep going with your thought. I want to keep this up here to come back to that. Because y'all were traded when the team was on the downslide. So right. why y'all y'all weren't there to live. Y'all wasn't in that, in that play-in game. Right. To get them where they are now. So right. hell no, y'all don't deserve a ring. Right, Tasha, and I and I went I bounced back and forth about this because I was like, would the would the Lakers be petty and not offering them a ring? But if you but, over but show me a precedence of that. Who gets a ring for and when they weren't even on the team at the time of the championship? When they were on the team, the Lakers were shitty. They were. They were. No, so you weren't they weren't doing anything to help the Lakers to get to where they are. And then when he went to Chicago. He the main one gun bumping, talking about, yeah, our goal is to knock them out of the out He of did. The he place. said that and did and did not do that. Now, right, wait a minute. Now, now, Jarrell, you hang tight because we're going to come back to this. That's another fair file question I want to ask Tasha. But Mike has a has a, a an opposing view. He uh -uh. said they still help win games, take away those wins, and they don't make it. Uh -uh. MLB does it all the time. Nope. Tasha, you say what? He wasn't in that gym shooting them free throws. You said he wasn't boxing out Kevon Looney. Because mm -mm. <laughs> if he was playing worth some count, they would have kept him on the team. So, no, they don't deserve a ring. They like, like I said, this is one I bounced back and forth with on this because I'm thinking. Well, why would you get, again, that's participation trophy. Why would you get somebody a ring when really, they. Really, Tasha? You, you going participation trophy? They are, look, the Lakers and none of us had. And if you out here saying you had a Laker outside of you just because you was a Lakers fan, you had the Lakers advancing, you are a damn lie. That they, is true. That is the true. The Lakers are scratching. They scrapping. They out here balling. They're at AD. Only went down a couple of times. Right. We'll turn it off. Boys are fighting. Y'all ain't out there. And, they and, don't and, deserve a ring. Why? Because I was on the team? Early in the season when we was in 13th place out of 15 teams in the West. Right. They started winning when y'all was gone. <laughs> no, Tasha, the only scenario with me personally – that I would want to ring from a team if I was no longer there was if I had some kind of catastrophic injury that cost me the season That's where different. I was injured. That's different. But if you ship me away and you were in the bottom of the conference when you ship me away and then all of a sudden you become one of the best teams in the league after I'm gone, I don't know if I'm going to wear that, wear that ring. Right. Really? So I don't you, know if so, I'm going to so do it like that. You want to be NBA champion Patrick Beverly and you ain't ditched nothing? No, you can say that because that because that, I mean that that's apropos. It, it, it's ooh, that's a close one. That's why I was like, is this fair or is this foul? No, I mean, if you're the Lakers, they're gonna do the right thing and offer them the rings. I don't no, know if I would take. No, them. you know Rob Palenka is petty. Come on, look who he played with. You know that man is petty. He out there in LA, done got his face all tightened up and whatnot. Right. So wait a minute, you do you think LeBron is petty? Because LeBron will have, ultimately have but, to sign off on this. And, and do you really? Because Patrick like, Beverly had words for LeBron when he left. Now, LeBron will definitely take pages from the book of Michael Jeffrey Jordan and yeah. Kobe Bean Bryant. Because those are two of the pettiest competitors. And Bron going to be real petty with this. He going to be like, like Kiki, I don't know this man. Now, Nashville, Tennessee's in the house. Stiana checking it. Now, Stiana's a competitor you, of the highest Steve. order. She says, if you're not on the team, how do you get a ring? Did you Thank mean the round next, Steve? That had a little... If you're not on the team, how you get that ring? Well, hey. Shout out to Steve. Y'all see her, her her photo there. Stiana was once again a level five rated level five teacher in Tennessee. So shout out to our girl Steve. Tasha, you racking up awards like Beyonce. Like like you about to you 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 we about to call you Queen B. 
like out there in Tennessee. Like That's crazy. what we talking about. But but Michael still poses an interesting point. If you take those wins away, the few that they had, they don't make the play in. That still don't sway you though, right? No, because. The way the Lakers are playing now, they would have been in the playoff tournament because they did not get into the playoff until they were gone. That's, That's what I don't they were they were they were 13th at the, at the trade deadline. More than Steph. I'd be damned if I'm gonna give somebody a ring who wasn't out there sweating, putting their body on the line. Pops uh like LeBron went down with a you know, got injured last night, got hit across the face last night. AD fell down on the ground, and my little friend Christian was like, "Oh, the Diablo!" Like right. he, every every time AD hit the ground, I was I would be clutching the pillow, like, "No, I didn't stay up all night for this." Right, <laughs> get, get your big and, ass up. Right, and then the thing is, when Gino gets up, he says, "Did that boy get hurt last night?" And I said, "He said, he said the world is always is always not playing." And I said, "You no, started this, Tasha. You started this with the street clothes." Two, three years ago, before he even left New Orleans, you started the street clothes, and the man hadn't recovered since. I'm glad he's having a renaissance season. Kenny Man said they don't deserve no ring, man. They don't. Mike, they Mike, don't. You're, being, you're being outvoted here. They say they don't deserve I mean, a that's, ring. That's, that's asinine to even sit up and think that they – why would he even say that? I talked oh, well, to him, and he said, now, he said they win one, we need a ring. So everybody who – what's his name? Uh, Cousins, does he need a ring? Right. Hell no. But, but, but I will say this, though. I will say this, though. There is precedence for this. Uh, now, Anderson Verichild in, in uh, 2016 was released from the, the Cleveland Cavaliers. But he when was picked was up by released? Golden State. When was he released? Uh, it, was some, it was at the trade deadline, I suppose. He winds up going to Golden State and playing in the finals against Cleveland. Cleveland beat them, of course, coming back from 3-1. And Verizal declined the ring from Cleveland. But again, Verizal had been with Cleveland how many years? He had been, yeah, he was a staple there when LeBron first came on board. What he, up, Carter? He, he was so hey CP. See, he was somebody that, that got the the Cavs kind of to where they were. But he turned down the ring, though. He said, I'm on, I'm not on the team exactly. no more. Exactly. What man sits out here begging? Like, Patrick, you can No, he you. said begging? Who out here begging for rings and whatnot? Like, who does that? And I would be like, can you put that ring up? <laughs> Tasha, how can I be like, Tasha, you like my championship ring? I'll be just like, be waiting for the blowback. <laughs> I'll be like, if you don't take that shit off your hands. <laughs> Like, nice. I'm glad we saved this one because I was bouncing back and forth. Like, damn, I don't, I don't even know why that ring. was up for debate. That's stupid. To- because I'm not gonna still. I'm not gonna look at you, Patrick Beverly, as a champion. Exactly. So why do you want the ring? Just so right. you can say you got it. Was you trying to hock it because your career is <laughs> over? Like, what you trying to do? Like, Seattle was right there with you. <laughs> she said, "Take it to the punch." <laughs> <laughs> the one over on White Ridge Road in Charlotte. I, right. Okay. All right. Sell your aunt ring. and sell your ring. Oh, boy. All right. Now, Tasha is about to get a little heavy here. So I, I want to get your thoughts on this one because this is another one where I was like, is this fair or is this foul? Because I see, I, I see both sides of, of this. Now, this one has a couple of layers to it. So I want to make sure it right. I want to make sure everybody's caught up. Now, Fox Sports radio host Doug Gottlieb, formerly of college basketball lore, he went on the radio a few days ago after Joel Embiid was voted MVP, and he said that Nikola Jokic would have won his third straight MVP title had Kendrick Perkins not gone on national TV and cried racism and made it about race. Now, Tasha, I want to just catch the people up on how this came about. Maybe about four or five weeks ago, we came on this very show and we talked about Kendrick Perkins' remarks about European-born players not receiving the same level of criticism as American-born players, i.e. black players, for the most part. There's not many white American players in the NBA, let's just face it. And the, the, the topic was around the MVP race and while Jokic keeps winning it but not having playoff success, but yet we nitpick a KD, a LeBron, a Westbrook, uh, uh, MB, we nitpick them to death saying why they shouldn't have or why they should have won a championship by now. So to bring that all into focus, 
Once that conversation started, Gottlieb is alleging that people got scared off from voting for Jokic for fear that it looks like they were trying to play the race game. Do you think this is fair or foul for Gottlieb to say this? On the outside, this is coming from a woman who always gonna bet on black. So I'm just gonna put that out there. It's, I, I'm going to always root. All right, Mike Wilborn. <laughs> I mean, it is. I'm gonna always. I, what do I tell you and Mike all the time? I root for black until black disappoints me. Right. Or black now, and you've been consistent me. with that. Run the tapes. Unless black uh, disappoints me or embarrasses me, right. I'm gonna always root for black. I think because we really haven't seen a player like Jokic. Right. That's what made him so phenomenal. Right. And the man can ball. Now, was it last year, year before last, when I really thought MB should have won, but what happened? MB kept getting hurt. Right. He even got a little tinged up towards the end of the season this year. He's, he's missed games in these playoffs. Right. He He's a he's an honorable mention street clothes. Right. He is. Street the process has been a process. Right, he's a street clothes in the making. But I really think Joel Embiid, up until the point where they were voting, had the better season for right. what he was doing with his team. Right, right. Now, but here's but, the thing with, with that. Jokic is just playing the best out of anybody in the in, in the well, world yeah. right now. Well, Jokic, yeah. just look how he dispatched a, a, of KD and the boys. Um, they've only lost two playoff games. He's averaging a triple double, damn near, just like he has for the season. Um, it's it's interesting because they're he's a reverse race baiter. I will say this about Gottlieb, but he does. I'm not going to say he doesn't have a point because the NBA wanted to make sure that this that didn't overshadow the the story of the MVP. Jokic could have very well won his third straight MVP this year, but although. I Embiid had a phenomenal year. But I also think it goes back to the fact of them saying, why should he have won it three years in a row? Because they started right. listing him with people. Right, because Mike didn't even win it three years in a row. Exactly. We know he should have won it for 10 straight years. Exactly. And so, right. what, like they were saying, they even threw Steve Nash in there. Like, how do you get somebody like Steve Nash, the MVP, when Steve Nash really ain't did anything but run through with that stringy-ass hair? When he won his second MVP over Shaq's dominant season, I believe in 2002, he averaged 15 points a game. Exactly. But, you know, he still won. Now, I'm not comparing those two because I think Jokic had, I mean, with his MVP, you know, wins, he was, to me, the the better player for right. that season. Because, I think, and I think right now he is a better all-around player than Embiid. Be, be, I mean, Embiid can shoot the three, but he's not a passer like Jokic. And, yes, Mark Jackson, who he drew our two, didn't even have Joker on his ballot. Now that's foul. Come on, Mark Jackson, that's foul. That's what I was lo I was looking for because I thought I saved it. I had something saved with the vote, how the voting broke down. Because I was going to tell you how Ja ran on one vote, and it was for third place. He right. he, didn't, he didn't receive any first place votes, and I think. Uh, What's his name with the Mavs? Uh, the, um, Luca. Luca, like Luca, didn't even really have a lot of first place votes. The majority of the votes went to Embiid had the most first place votes, and that's what got him the MVP. Jokic right, had, but the lead Jokic first. off. It, it kind of speaks to Gottlieb's narrative that come on, man, you can't say that he didn't deserve a vote. Mark Jackson, and right. you sitting courtside watching all these games. Right, you're watching. Uh, well, I don't. Did they do any Denver games? But yeah, he's sitting right there. You watching those games. So to not, that's almost kind of like with the Heisman. Sometimes right. when you see the breakdown of the Heisman voting, you're like, you saw. We all saw what this man did. How did he not get any first place votes? Right. Or how did he not get these votes? Right. Um, now, Kenny, how was John not on it? Just go back to the one where Tasha said that if you keep cutting up off the court, it's going to cost you money on the court. And the NBA punished him yet again by not letting him right. get on the all NBA team and just handing him $40 million for embarrassing them on a worldwide stage. Right. They, That's they, why they, John they, they, they get team. this money and get on out of here. Right. So they see didn't see reward the bad team. behavior, but he does agree with you that Joker deserves a vote. We want to say good morning to my mama. AP Coach checking in, morning. 
morning. Yeah, he says, oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, the gun gate, uh, you know, he when he had the little Dusty Ruger. Shouts out to Carlos. DJ. Shouts out to Carlos. <laughs> to Dusty Ruger. All right, Pete, Carlos. Now, as an aside, I want to go back to, to Jarrell's question for you real quick. J.J. Reddick skipping the line. What about Sam Cassell? He's been an assistant for years. Is J.J. getting special treatment because he's on first take? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with White. It's because right. he's out there. He's seen. His voice is being heard. But that man talks some basketball, though. He, But, again, you can talk basketball, but talking basketball, playing basketball, and being able to coach it are three different things. That is true. That is true. That is three different things. And we'll see – how that how that shakes out if he does in fact get the job, but you know we we ain't, we ain't rolling up on no jobs like that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't we ain't rolling up on no jobs like that. Yes, Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers, and we will definitely shout y'all out here. The mothers are, are, are just rolling in. Hey, good morning, Miss Hastings. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for checking us out, Tasha. Now, three of the four teams. In in the conference championship in the NBA have been settled. On Thursday night, we saw the, the Joker dismantle Phoenix. This is the second year in a row that Phoenix lost an elimination game by 30 points. Tasha, um, okay, flowers to Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. They, they're proving that they are a legitimate number one seed, but I'm going to focus on Phoenix. Will Chris Paul ever win a ring? I'm asking for Mike. No. Like, like, like we said, as long as he's uh, street clothes as well. Right, he's street cold clothes uh uh part two. And then what 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 exactly do you do with Aiden? What is DeAndre Aiden's issue? He's too big of a player, too talented of a player to always be hurt or when he's in there not be effective at all. I think it would have been because you know I said I was gonna sweep, but that's because I was doing the you and Mike pick and picking with my heart because KD is my boy. <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> But no, right. but no, on paper, Phoenix have more talent with CP3 healthy. And and if if DeAndre Ayton had had his big ass out right. there at least attempting to play. When I saw him missing bunnies at the at the rim and, and not getting back on defense, Monty Williams has had a problem with him from day one. He didn't want him to return to the team after the uh the NBA finals meltdown when he melted down those last four games. So who do you get rid of? Eight or Monty Williams. One of them got to go. And look, you're going to, because you gave KD this money, so you tied up with these contracts, you're going to have to get rid of Aiton to get you some money and or some picks. Right. Because, because you gave Aiton. away four first rounders to bring KD over. And that was that loss was not on KD. You know, I love to read I mean, KD. Even though, K, even though KD was, was playing like ass. That last game, he didn't have his best game, but damn, you're playing a, the 35-year-old 40 minutes a night. Him and Booker was putting in all the work, putting up all the shots. So they didn't have a real bench. Um, it, it, that was just that, that was a surprising outcome for Denver to get done like that. Should CP3 call it a career? Yeah. That's more, that's more money. I mean, CP3 is a very talented player, but he's always coming up short. No pun intended. No pun intended, because he's barely six feet tall. Um, he's always coming up short, and I think he's pretty much giving it all he's got. I know he wants to be on the Okay, banana. Anita Baker. You know what? Where is Shamika Baker anyway? Where is Shamika Baker? Somebody wake Shamika up. Tell, tell her we on live. No, Shamika we, we, Baker we didn't now. See that, we didn't see that, that profile picture. Right, with the, with the shoulder out and the chiffon on. Bring you something I can give you <laughs> in exchange for it. <laughs> Uh, we all know the CP3 stands for can't play three games in a row. That's what he is, and that's what he's going to be. So, Chris, it's time for you to take it to the booth. It's time for you to throw on a suit and sit next to Kenny and Shaq and Charles. But I and guarantee you he's going to try to give it one more go. I think his decision would, will like, no, rest no. on what, that, what Phoenix does, especially when it comes to DeAndre Ayton. They need to get rid of DeAndre. They need to DeAndre needs to force his way out and get to a, a situation where they value the big. I mean, it's almost like if they had Fat Ass down there in New Orleans. I think if Fat Ass was playing for the Suns, he would at least play. I'm not mad at that trade request to send Zion to Phoenix and to send Ayton to New Orleans where he can get a fresh start. He says, um, Mike says, retire. Son's going to let him go. Ooh, can you cut CP3? Retire? We talk about retirement. <laughs> he 
got to go. CP3, you cost your team yet another championship. You got to go. Now, Miami, somebody help me figure this out. Because if you had Miami, and I'm talking to you too, uh, to our, our famed sponsor, Miss Mary J herself. Did you have Miami on your bingo card to go to the Eastern Conference Finals? Because I don't think you did. How are they doing this, Tasha? They played against the suspect Knicks team, like I said. What, the Knicks are going to I said I do not trust the Knicks. You said that. I was not expecting them to beat Milwaukee, to be honest. But once and they, they called a break not playing Milwaukee, actually. Right. Uh, the and, Knicks then, did. and then when we had, was it the shows when we had to pick? And I think I picked Miami simply because I did not trust, I don't trust the Knicks. And the game was so tight. Towards yeah, the game, end. That was a that was a great a great game last night. I thought that that they, that the New York might pull it out, but Julius Randle, you big for nothing. You 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 big for nothing. Like if you, you don't be big, big, don't be big for nothing. Big. Right, just it, like like well, you wasting height and you are wasting talent. You are a six foot ten uh, glorified Clay Thompson jacking up threes when you need to be down there banging in the paint and helping your team. Uh, with a, a a small front court with Bam out of Bayou as your center, but yet you scared to go in the paint. Bam out of Bayou ain't co- Akeem Olajuwon. I, it's just I was just miffed at, at their at the. I mean, and Bam really sealed that game in those final seconds last night. Hold on, Kenny. Kenny snitching. Kenny draw snitching. He said his dad was hurt. We sorry, D. We sorry, Damon. We sorry, D. But the Knicks. I thought it was Knicks in seven for a minute. But uh, Jalen Brunson, Damon, you, y'all got a superstar. Now Damien knows how I feel because at the time when the Knicks were in the finals against the Houston. Oh, Rockets, yeah, I remember that. I was in the military, so I could not see any of that. And I remember I was calling my best friend, Keisha, like when we would get our time to call. And I was calling her, and she was telling me. And then the thing was, she says, well, I was recording the games for you, but the games got interrupted. And I said... Huh? Well, OJ Simpson. Oh, that was the OJ, the, the Bronco chase during that, that finals game. You're right. Now, did you call her? Did you call her Keisha like Drake? Kiki, are you watching? Are we winning? <laughs> I mean, I would just, because, you know, we would get some news updates every now and then. And at that time, y'all know I love Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing was my, was my favorite and my favorite. Everybody scratch your Eddie. He had a big one too. Why you have a high top fade with an Eddie down to here? <laughs> Scratch your animals. Good luck, Eddie. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a Pistons fan, but I love Patrick Ewing and Dominique Wilkins. You like tough, up. hard nosed teams the Pistons, the Knicks, the 49ers. I'm not the team that's going to knock them over. That's right. what I mean. You want to like no, see somebody's legs broke. You right. See I somebody. don't like no soft finesse. Every time you get bumped, you you flail. I don't like. That's why I really don't care for a lot of this NBA now because it's right. not hard nose. I want right. my players out there like they on the line, like they on that front seven. Now that's how know, I want my basketball team to be. I ain't mad at that because that's that's very true. Now, there's somebody right now that's having a good old laugh about the damn Knicks right now. You know his name is Michael Hasso. Because when they were cheering up to one, wasn't that they were doing all that cheering? Mike was livid. He was like, why y'all cheering? Y'all ain't won nothing yet. And they ain't won another game since. Mike, we blame you. The state of New York is well, coming They did here. because they won that series. After. No, they called, did, but he was we like, y'all ain't won. Out. And I went back like not winning nothing. But what did I tell him? I said, they ain't been here in 20 years. Let them people celebrate. They was, they was running the streets like they had just won the whole damn thing, though. Can you? Stella. Right, they was jumping around like like House of Pain. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, sit y'all asses down. That was the first round. Now y'all got to go home. We're going to hold this L. And last but not least, the Lakers. What else can you say about this man? The man has, in, in year 20, went through Steph again to make it to the conference finals. If, if, if he gets number five, can we just go ahead and just call it a uh, call it a race? Can we just tell y'all MJ stands to throw in the towel if he gets number five? Because you know he's about to get number five, right? Oh, now, oh, now you're a Laker fan. Oh, okay, I see. I'm a LeBron fan. If he goes oh, to Toronto next year, I'm going to be singing, oh, Canada. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know that. Right. Yeah, mama, I'm bringing out that crown. King James. 
did his thing in six games, didn't even take him seven. For all of the Jordan fans that he never went seven games, we destroyed the defending champions. We as in the king. The Anthony Davis accepted your challenge. You challenged him to keep his street clothes exactly. after work hours. Keep them clothes in the closet, in the locker room. Keep your uniform on, and now, then y'all can win. Tasha said this before the game one uh, game against Memphis. He said, she said, I like Memphis in seven, but if AD shows up, y'all in trouble. He showed up, we were in trouble. He showed up against Golden State. They asked this is gone. How, long, how much longer can he keep this up, Tasha? Well, when they get up there in that thin air. Yeah, that's another that's another beast. That's another thing. They haven't lost a home game up there in the playoffs there. We're going to have to see how his body, which is obviously made out of paper mache, <laughs> is going to hold up. We're going to have to pray LeBron's foot, you know, stays healthy. And those... Players who I don't even know their damn names. It's Where written he- all over your face. <laughs> damn. You don't you have, don't to, have say to say a word. Word. <laughs> You don't Tasha, have to say a word. when I bring this crown out, y'all. Go you ahead, don't Tasha. You have to say a word. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. So, you, so what are you thinking? Early matchup a prognosis. The series starts on Tuesday. Denver or the Lakers, who you got? Man, I want to bet on Black for the Kane. He not got I'm, this close, y'all. We might as well see him over the finish line for some. But I'm a, but I'm gonna have to go with Denver. Denver had lost a game at home in the playoffs. The Lakers haven't lost a game at home in the playoffs, and Denver has home court advantage. Sounds like Denver in seven. I mean, I just think right now. Then and I think Jokic heard all that talk too. Yeah, he's gonna say I didn't get the MVP, but I'm gonna get this ring and this trophy. Right now, the Jokic. Now we know that he got goon in him. We saw his brothers. The apple don't fall too far from the tree. What, what Mike say? Anybody last name in an itch got an itch in their name? Right. Where they came? Where they came from? Just leave them alone. Let them be. Let them. Let them. Now Kenny makes a good point. He said Austin Reeves number fifteen is a true baller. I like the Lakers' depth more than Denver's depth, but at the end of the day, I think that Denver is the one team that can neutralize AD Mm -hmm. with Jokic. Mm -hmm. Jokic can get that man in foul trouble, and Jokic doesn't need a double team to help him guard AD. Jokic will have him back in his street clothes. He'll be out there in a sheer shirt like this. (laughs) Jokic is going to have him out there on that three-point line looking for help. Help me let that one go. Casey, help me sing. Lakers full show, crown up. Nashville, Tennessee, crown up AP for LA. That's that's, that's what we're going. So, Tasha, you got what? Denver and what? Uh, I'm going to say Denver and actually, I'm going to say five because I'm I really, to be honest, I'm worried Ooh. about LeBron James's <laughs> stamina and yeah. that air. Even though LeBron James, let me, let me put this out here. Put it out there. For the last time that I have to explain this because Paul puts this narrative out there that I hate LeBron James. No, you hate this crown. I, when I say I love everything about LeBron James, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, LeBron James loved it. I didn't like it so much when he came and swatted that ball uh, against the Pistons. I don't, I didn't like that shit. Now I didn't like that. Now that's when he was disrespectful. For him to have come from where he came from. Yes, yes. So anybody's out there saying, oh, he was a product of a single parent. That's why such and such can't make it. That's why such and such can't do it. The king is a billionaire. Yeah. He ain't got no outside kids. Nope. He's been with the same woman since he was about 15, 16 years old. Right. And she runs the house like a true mother. And she runs that house flawlessly. Yeah, y'all may see Savannah when she's all dolled up and looking gorgeous. But, baby, Savannah will go on with a do-rag on her head. Melanie Taylor's like, right, go ahead and talk about LeBron. That's when he shows out. Ask Dylan Brooks. Right. Oh, I poke bears. Oh, he old. He got to give me 40. What's somebody say? They better start giving him some Chinese lessons. <laughs> he can be like, wait, ain't the third thing. Then he did what? This she. She's a she. <laughs> she, she. <laughs> right. He's going to be over there with, with Jackie and them. Right. But I love LeBron James. 
just just period. I just and, and I don't even like Michael. I love I mean I like Michael Jordan. I don't love Michael Jordan, but I still think Michael Jordan is just the goat. But right. I and, love, and the thing is you have plenty of numbers to back up that claim. Like so And I mean know, I just I love that, yeah. everything about LeBron James. I just do. Right. Um that's uh right. She said that's a that's a that's good a man. Good man, Savannah. <laughs> Shouts out Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> a good man. Because I don't see many Tyler Perry movies. All right. Um, now, now, let's go. There's one more game that has to be settled before we get to the conference finals. And that game goes down tomorrow. Boston and Philly. They're going seven. Now, Philly, you need your ass whooped for losing game six at home. Up 3-2. You let Jason Tatum outscore your whole team in the fourth quarter by himself. And now you're in the game seven in Beantown. Tasha, how do you see this one playing out tomorrow afternoon? I'm going to go ahead and go with the Celtics because I did pick them to be my Eastern Conference champion. She said acupuncture. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, don't put that out of them edits. Then they're going to be saying that the, 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 oh, that's right. They don't test for dope no they more. They don't test for dope no more. Mama, Mama, no, don't eat, eat, it up. eat it up, LeBron. Eat it up. Mama, don't wear the CBA. <laughs> LeBron's a brown is somebody. <laughs> Come on, Savannah, get that mix right. Tasha, go ahead. You, you, you saying you like Boston, huh? You like a stir fry. <laughs> so, so you you like Boston tomorrow? Is that what you're saying? I'm gonna go for Boston. I just think it's time for them to step up. And if Boston loses this, it's, it's gonna, not going to be any more talk about Boston being a, a viable team. I, I, I just, agree. This is your legacy right here, Tatum. Because y'all, y'all basically, if y'all lose, y'all gonna get beat at home by a banged up MVP and and James Harden, who's past his prime. Right. Who who can still put up numbers and get you what you need? Because he did get them through the game. Right. Uh, that one game when um MB was out, but I, I don't I don't see them going out like that. I agree with you, Tasha. Um, as much as I'm rooting for Joel Embiid to make his first conference finals and to finally vanquish the Boston Celtics, beating them at, at home in the game seven, I got images of, of Bird and McHale and, and DJ. Them black con and, with them black leather converse. Right, and Parrish and, 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 and uh, uh, ML Carr waving that towel. You just ain't going to get it done on game in game seven in that, in that city. It's just, that's the city of champions. Love them, hate them. Boston cranks out them champions. And one more thing. If you've been to the, this is not the old garden where, you know, Red Arbach was in there smoking that cigar. Right, he let him that victory cigar. Now, how disrespectful up, are you? Up the joint. If you notice now on the in the new garden, the only thing they have of Red Arbach is his name signed on the court, but the outside of the building is actually black and gold. Let's see, this is the stuff you're only going to get here at the extra point. T Tasha is in her bag today. She's and in her bag. And y'all know only reason why is because I like hockey. And I remember I was watching. Oh, Brewerstown. Yes. And I saw the aerial. And I just I said, I said, that the, here's my dumb ass. Is that the same building the Celtics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Bo Boston, they had a phenomenal team in hockey as well. They just they let one slip away this I year. Like, they they like, this is the garden. This is the same building by that famous bridge. I was like. The building ain't even green and white. I said the building is black and gold for the Bruins. Mama said she got a seat for Harden and she got a seat for, for Embiid. They're going to take two seats and Boston will pull it out. I agree with both of you. So um, Boston, Boston basically needs to, needs to win this to not embarrass their name. Now, speaking of embarrassing your name, Doc Rivers has blown several 3-1 leads. Is he going to blow a 3-2 lead and keep his job, Tasha? Who got pitchers on? Again, who you going to get? He got some pitch with some goats somewhere. Because he, who has milked more out of one title than Doc Rivers? Uh, 2008 was a long time ago. You've blown 3-1 leads with, with Philly. You've blown 3-1 leads with the Clippers. You've done you've done that twice with the Clippers, once in the bubble and once outside the bubble. Um, you're up three two with game six at home the other night, and you blow it. You don't, and, and Tatum didn't even score to the fourth quarter. But again, that goes to the is it the coach or the player? Because the player can the coach can't help if somebody's out there missing shots. Hey, like Jason Kidd said after after one of the Mavs losses, hell, I'm just watching the game like y'all. <laughs> he put his whole team under the bus. 
He's like, what y'all want me to do? Suit up? He said, I got <laughs> Right. Drop about 12 dimes. What you need me to do? I'm just here watching it like, yo, Jason Kidd forever a gangster for that. All right. So we got y'all set. We got y'all set with the NFL schedule. We got y'all set with um, with what's going on with the NBA and the championship series. If he loses again, he's going to need to go overseas and coach. He's going to be – all right, him and Brooks going to be on the same team. On the you same might want to take Brooks and CP3 with you. About Doc ain't got no old school. T- <laughs> All right, Tasha, it is time for T Sizzle's top five. And in honor of one of the most precious weekends, one of the most uh, revered weekends, it's Mother's Day weekend. We know all know how we feel about our mamas. And so, with respect to Mother's Day weekend, we're going to go through T Sizzle's top five TV moms, the mothers we grew up adoring or that we adore today. The floor is yours. Okay, now y'all know I'm a little strange, but I actually and have- I like it. No, no, no. And I like it. I don't phone phone. Cameo made two appearances in the chat this week. Yes, we have, we have definitely have. We didn't talk about Cameo earlier this week. She do I need to put the red cup on. Oh, uh, Tasha, they, the kids okay. don't know about the red cup. Now, what, oh. let's let's. let's that, okay, so one of mine has already made the board for 500, Chuck. So I got Marge Simpson. Nice. Okay, okay, you went there. Nice, okay. I mean, because y'all think about how bad Bart is bad AF. Lisa is emo AF. And why is Maggie 30 years old still sucking at Pacifier? Who is that little Chris from Boys in the Hood? But Mark still manages to keep that together with that dolt of a husband, Homer. That's a good one. That totally went past me on that one. That's a that's a really good one. I don't have that one on my list. That's a good one. The next one I have Elise Keaton, not Anna Elise Keaton, but Elise Keaton. Family ties. Oh, okay. Can you so imagine? Nine. Yes. What will we do, baby? Hey, they had the grooviest show intro of any show in the Ever. 80s. Ever. Ever. Denise Williams was like hitting them little riffs. <laughs> 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 what will we do, baby, without us? Sha la la la. I want to bring back good memories. All right. But I thought about you think they were a total liberal family. Yes. They had the deal. With Michael J. Fox being a young Republican. Right. He, he was the Reagan administration. Yes, because that's when the show was out doing the Reagan show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, Steve. Steve, you know you sang along to that when that came on. They was doing a little painting of the family. Yes. Oh. I used to love that show. The next one, I know that this one hits closer to home. Rebecca Pearson. And I know a lot of you guys don't know that, but that's the mother from This Is Us. Okay. You ain't got too many women gonna take a black baby that was left at the fire station into her home with her with her uh, twins. Did she ask whose chocolatey baby is this? Who's who's the daddy of this chocolatey baby? <laughs> not a baby. Because if you know the story, she actually had triplets, but one of hers died, oh. and then there they go. Some uh, Randall's parents left Randall at the fire station. And Randall was in the hospital when they had their triplets. So they just ended up taking Randall home and raising Randall as a Pittsburgh Steeler fan, like his other two siblings. So they were like the triplets. You know what? It's funny because the only time I ever saw that show was I was flying home, flying American back from Nashville one one holiday. And every monitor in those headrests had on that show. Your- no. I'm saying that everybody that was on that flight was watching that show, and I was like, "What is it about? Why is everybody watching one one show?" But I get it; it must be it must have been great. I'm getting ready to put your business out in the street. Don't do that. Y'all know this fool ain't never seen Dumb and Dumber. Uh, moving on in a hurry in my mic voice. One of my fa- my my favorite street in this world is Mockingbird Lane down there in Dallas. And one of the scenes, the funniest, one of the funniest scenes in that crazy movie, they sing a song about a mockingbird. And when I first saw that and I started singing it, he didn't know what the hell I was talking about. 
It hurt my heart. My I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you not know this? But I got anyway. a couple of months between the NBA finals and the NBA, I mean the NFL preseason to put that on my watch list. Okay. See, it was my it was my upbringing. Thank you, mama. Oh, Mama Colton, don't co-sign it. Mama, mama don't watch that kind of foolishness, though. You you got to make her watch something like that. <laughs> so next on the list is, of course, the illustrious Claire Huxtable. Yes. I don't care what Bill did with them thighs. That didn't have nothing to do with her. She that, was didn't a nothing to do, that didn't have nothing to do with Claire. Right. My number one mom ever. Wait a minute. He, he, Kenny said he flabbergasted. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. Make you make you want to have second thoughts about your uncle. <laughs> right. Now she did agree. Must see TV was this is us. <laughs> My number one mother, and no, it ain't Florida Evans because she always kept James down. She used to make me mad. You know what? I, I kept Florida off my list too. I ain't even put Florida on my list. My number one mom of all time, <laughs> Mama Jefferson. She used to get she used to get in the wheezy. Mama Jefferson did not play about her son. Win, lose, right, wrong. She, she ain't having no disrespect. Mama Jefferson did not go for it when it came to George. <laughs> hold on. Hold on, Mama. What was she? The queen of shade. <laughs> she was the original she, queen of shade. And you could tell her son took care of her once he had all those, uh, those dry cleaning places. She was always dappered down, not a hair out of place. She sit there on that couch and just those zingers. Louise, hi, Louise. <laughs> George, George. She wanted him to marry somebody else. They about sixty. It's too late. She kept trying to break the marriage up, y'all. She trying to break the marriage up. They about they about eighty. Two Lionels, Lionel and Jenny then got married and had a baby, and Mother Jefferson was still she still trying to break the. Marriage. Well, she went all home to the Lord trying to get that marriage up out of here. <laughs> that is hilarious. All right. I just want to go through a couple that wasn't on her list. Um, I wanted I wanted to, to give a shout out, and I'm aging myself with some of these, but my number one mama is Rochelle from Everybody Hates Chris. Yes. She reminded me of Angela Phyllis Coulter. All she wanted her kids to do was clean up, do good in grades. But if you even think about acting like you're going to talk back, she's she going to whop you upside your head. So she's one. Of course, Claire Huxtable, uh, too. And that's your favorite show, too. That is my favorite show. Everybody hates Chris. I will be watching it while I have my pancake brunch after the show. Uh, number three, I have uh, Peggy Bundy. I thought about Peggy. <laughs> she wasn't shit. Peggy wasn't, wasn't S-H-R-T. She was not... She woke up in the morning and put on leggings and, and high heels. Ain't <laughs> ain't cooked a meal. Smoking ain't ran the homework. She got a With cigarette. Her, but look, her hair stayed done. She stayed clean. Well, I've never saw her do not one motherly thing the whole 10 years that was on At the all. One time she did say, because I remember Marcy came in and she says, she says, what are you doing? She said, cooking. <laughs> <laughs> She was like, "Oh well." <laughs> she, she, hey, but but she kept that house together. Shouts out to Peggy Bundy. Um, uh, for Mama Payne. Mama Payne. Upper hand, upper hand. <laughs> if you would have killed my bird, Gina, <laughs> I would have got the slicing and dicing. I got the slicing and dicing. <laughs> you took my baby, done left the country. <laughs> <laughs> this is all love. You done got us lost. Now you done got us stuck on the curve. So many oh, classic uh, one liners from Mama Payne. It's Martin Cop. <laughs> right. Speaking of somebody who always wanted to break up their son's marriage, <laughs> Mama, <laughs> Mama Payne. Everyone, if everywhere we go, it smells like day old cabbage. Maybe it's you. <laughs> maybe you just stink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what she, when uh, she told uh, Gina told Mama Payne to have a seat. She said, "Hell no, Gina. Mama's feet stay planted in case I gotta go two to the gun and take it to the head." <laughs> now what you want, Gina? <laughs> she said, "Mama's feet 
she stayed playing. She was playing the upper hand. She was squaring up. Upper hand. She was squaring up on upper hand. When they went and got married, and Mama Payne was in that church, she was like. household on Thursday night at seven o'clock we were oh huddled God. around that TV watching Martin Mama Payne. Oh my God. Ooh, I am too Kenny. Mama oh. Payne got down for hers. Uh and last but certainly not least <laughs> last but certainly not least um uh, and this was a shout out to my mama Gladys because I watched the show with her and this lady tickled me to death and that was Sophia from the Golden Girls. Sophia used to light in the daughter Dorothy <laughs> That purse. Ah! Officially. Ah! 37. She used to, to tell Blanche and Rose and Emma. And I could hear my I could hear my, my great aunt uh, Mother Gladys. I could hear Mama Gladys laughing right here in my ear now as we would watch that show. And I was like, what is she watching that she is in there cackling like this? The and it would be the Golden Girls. Girls. Woo! Okay, so that's what, that's my top five. T Sissel. It's all right, Mama. She said that purse. She did. She had that purse. She always walked around with that purse. Remember when, remember when she went to the hospital that time and she told she told the doctors when they asked her how did she hurt herself? And she told the doctors because her daughter made her lift furniture. <laughs> so by the time Dorothy got there, she was like, Well, well, she told us that you had her lifting furniture. And Dorothy said, it was wicker. <laughs> <laughs> so Mama went in there and told them people that Dorothy that had her lifting furniture. Then you're gonna get to the shady acres. Keep on, Sophia. She had on them little them little cafeteria lady shoes and that purse. And she would sit there and just tear you up. All right. Tasha, who you shouting out this week? I think we we both have the same shout outs. So let's so you go ahead and do it. And we'll let you let you run it there. It's to all our fabulous, fantastic mothers yes. out here in the Extra Point land yes. all over the world. Now, technically, Mother's Day is not until two weeks here. But where we're from, we celebrate Mother's Day tomorrow. Right. So that is a shout out to AP, to Sheila, to Sharon, to all our mothers. My baby our sister, Steph. Yes, Steph ain't our mama. I would, let me get to the, can I get to the second tier? Go ahead, dog. I'm sorry, I didn't know you was doing tears, Stephen A. Yeah. Smith. Go I ahead. Said, I said our mothers. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Um, you got uh, Mama Hold. I forgot Mama Holder out there in TV. Miss Mary shouts out. Those are our, those are our mother, mama, mama, Miss, Cole, mama Hastings. Mama Hastings uh, my mama, Mama Sharon. And Mama uh, Holder, those are our moms. I got to give a shout out to Mama Hasso as well. That's oh, yeah, Mama, Mama Hasso. If you Ma out there, listen, Mama Hasso. Mama Hasso, I, I love you. So then you go down to our second tiers, our sisters, our friends who are like our sisters. That's when you right. get your steps. She's going to say, Mabel, thank you, Steph. You got our <laughs> steps. You got our Steve's. You got our Treese's. You got all of those. You got um, Mike's sister. You got everybody. Right, Christina. Home. Yes, All happy Mother's Day, Christina. Yes, and, and then you got uh, you got Drew's lovely wife. That's our sister. Right, happy Stacey. Mother's Day, Lauren. That's Stacy. Stacy's our sister as well. So shout out to every mother out there, everyone who is a play mama who's raised children that have right. not been to them. That right. goes out to some of these aunties who we call. Right. Them. Right. Shout, oh, I forgot. Shout out to Mel. Mel is a mother. Our lovely uh. Shout out to Miss Taylor. Shout out to Tamika Nicole. Happy Mel, Mother's Day. Males, a shout out to everyone who has had a part in raising a child. Right, because it is not an easy job. And the older I get, the more respect I have for mothers worldwide. Y'all sacrifice you know, the unconditional love. It's just, it's how I was sending Stephanie a meme uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it was called, um, it said, Black mamas will complain but they going to get the job done. And it was these clips of this mama getting on her yes, kids. going out. Now, why didn't you do this? Right. Like, now, hand, now, hand me the flat irons and come on. Like, yeah. that's why the, did you let your half like this? Give me the flat irons and come on over here and sit down. Shouts out to Unc. Your, your, your day is coming up next month. We'll make sure to shout you out as well. And happy Mother's Day to your mother. And, and also, 
we want to give here at the Extra Point a cyber hug and send love to all of the people who will be celebrating Mother's Day without their mothers here on this earth. Yes. You are in our thoughts and in our prayers. Uh, happy Mother's Day. And you two will meet again in heaven. And until then, hey, my mama is open. Her door is always open. Like, well, like we can, we still got mamas here to love on you. So, like, pick one and, and, and let's keep that mama juice now, now rolling. That, now, that don't go for my mama because my mama uh, tell you sit down and then if you sit down on the wrong part of the couch, she's going to tell you get out of our house. <laughs> <laughs> don't do mama sharing like that. I'm not, the, I'm not lying. So, you can go to mama Cole. You, you even go to mama Hope. You can go to mama Hastings. They're going right. to go. Right. Y'all know where to find the hill out there in, in West Nashville. But if, no, you, go, if you go to mama Sharon's house, first of all, she's going to be like, why is you here? Right. Don't let and, and don't let uh, uh, Hazel scare you. She barking everybody. Now, <laughs> Langston was some good advice for everybody who's not a mama. Children, it's her day. Let her do what the hell she wants. That's a great mic drop. So <laughs> until then, we, and along with the mother of the extra point, we'll see y'all in six days and 23 hours. Until then, peace. Toss it up. Talk with, a, with a little mama. Mama, you know I love you. Ooh, you know I love you, mama. Come on, hey. right there. Mama, mama you know you're the queen of my heart. heart. Yeah. You're love your mama today if you can. Loving you like tears from the stars. Hey, Mama, I just want you to know. Now bring it on home. What's it like? Loving you's like food to my soul. Peace. And we're going to get five for singing the whole. Sorry, shout out to Boy.